So one of my subscriber reached out to me and told me that his company fired him in a very, very bad way, which means that his project got over and he was moved into pool. And in the pool, he got certain interviews. So there is a RNG team uh, which gave him certain interview calls. And those interview calls were completely misaligned with the kind of skill sets he has. So, for example, if he had Microsoft skill sets, he got calls for data analytics or for Java or something which was very different and he was not even given time to prepare for those interviews. So now what is happening these days is because companies don't have projects, because the kind of new business pipeline is drying and the current projects are getting over, people are hitting the pool, which means now once the project is over, you are on the pool. So there is a clock which starts because most companies have a limited bench period or pool period. In some cases, it is 45 days, 60 days or 90 days. So once that bench period is over, then you are asked to quit. That's what happens in most organizations. So now this guy, when he has hit the pool for a few days, he did not get any interview calls. But then later on, he got these two, three interview calls where the kind of requirements were completely different than what he was actually doing in the past. And this is like a very, very unfair way of companies to really let go people or fire people. If you don't have projects, if you don't have requirements, then why don't you tell that to your employees that, okay, we don't have requirements for your skill sets. Uh, please start to look outside. I mean, that's common sense. You can just tell them that you are a Microsoft person. We don't have Microsoft projects. We don't have a pipeline for the next X number of days, 60 days, 90 days. We will not be able to give you interviews. Please start to look outside. I mean, that's common sense. You can always do that. Why do you really want to paint a picture that you were given interviews and you failed and that is why we are firing you or that is why we are uh, asking you to go? Not done. That's completely unfair. So I think as an employee, we need to be wise enough. We need to be sharp enough to understand that as soon as we hit the pool, we should start to talk to this RMG coordinator. We should ask what kind of requirements are there in the pool? What kind of clients are these? And what are the primary and secondary skill sets required by these customers? And then you should start to prepare for those opportunities. So rather than taking a passive approach, which means after your project is over, you will sit and wait for the RNG coordinator to reach out to you and then tell you, okay, this is one opportunity, this is second opportunity. I think we need to be a lot more proactive and reach out ourselves and tell that, okay, I am there, I am hitting the pool or I am available in the pool. Please tell me what are the opportunities available. These are my skill sets and experiences. So a little bit of proactive approach will help. Now I know what you guys are going to tell me that a lot of time these RNG coordinators are not so receptive. They are not ready to share information beyond a point. So I think it is also important for companies to understand that the people who play the RNG coordinator role are absolutely important for your organization. I mean, as important as the managers because RNG people need to be sharp. They need to be really smart to understand the requirements, the set of people available, and then match the right people to the right requirements. A lot of time, RNG people are not smart enough to do that. So smartness is one aspect, but RNG people also need to be very empathetic. They need to understand that people who are coming on pool are already stressed. So they have lost a project and now they are already stressed to look for other opportunities. So the way you speak to your employees really matters. See, you have to understand that today you may not have good business or enough business in the pipeline, but that does not stop you from behaving properly. I mean, this employee has worked with you for so many years. Now you can't all of a sudden start to behave rudely because this guy is in pool. Okay, he is in pool because the project got over. He is not in pool because he was not performing well. So as a RMT coordinator, you have to be really people driven as well. I understand that companies have policies of X number of days of uh, bench period, which means after 60 or 90 days, you are supposed to fire uh, people who are not able to convert opportunities. But for that, you have to actually give them the right opportunities, right? Employees need opportunities to get into interviews which are aligned with their skills and experiences. You can't expect them to do wonders 
uh, in seven days or ten days, they can't just learn and become expert and you know start to crack interviews. And even if you expect them to do that, you need to clearly communicate what is expected. And there has to be a lot of due diligence done with respect to how that profile will get aligned with the requirement. Sometimes people may have a primary and secondary skill set, but the way the profile is written, the way the articulation is done is also important. And not all employees will be wise enough to do that. RMG has to do that kind of uh, due diligence and help employees crack those interviews. So I think effort needs to be done from both sides. Employees also need to understand that RMG people are execution people. They are not the people who are creating policies and they are there to help them get projects. So employees need to be proactive. Employees need to be ready to reskill and upskill. And at the same time, RMG people need to be good in communication. They need to tell what needs to be on the resume. They need to tell what is this client going to ask you in the interviews based on the past interviews, right? So RNG can also groom employees to a certain level to crack those interviews. So I think if both employees and RNG team work hand in hand, they can actually be in a win-win situation where employees will be able to crack a lot more interviews and RNG will be able to fulfill a lot more positions. But if both start to operate in silos where they treat each other as their enemies, then there is a problem. All right, let me know your experience of working with an RNG team in the comments or if you are yourself working as a RMG coordinator, let me know what challenges you have faced in the comments. All right, I hope this perspective was helpful. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe. If you like the video, hit the like button and share this in your WhatsApp groups and see you on another video soon. Take care and bye for now.